Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, December 2nd, 2016. This is Trader Tim from Emini Mind, and we're going to look at a couple of trades from this morning that set up fairly frequently on the Emini S&P situations that are common on the 512 tick chart. Uh, before we do that, Let's take a quick look at the daily chart on the left here. Earlier in the week, we were talking about how these previous highs back in September could act as support and the market would uh, potentially come down to that level, move sideways before rallying. And that's what we've seen this week. Uh, it was a little bit of a lackluster week. We had a couple decent uh, decent moves in the week, but um, for the most part, it's kind of slowly drifted lower. We've come down to the support level and are now uh, sitting in an inside day currently today, Friday. So we'll see next week if we can round this out and start to move higher, perhaps dipping in, forming a hammer, and then working our way to those uh, 2240 highs. Looking at today's trade, I want to talk about a situation that uh, we see a fair bit on the E-mini S&P. And so using a the simple uh, Fibonacci tool, I'm going to start drawing my drawing for this morning from lows, the left side of my screen, always working from left to right. So in this case, left is a low. And then if I move to the right, I find a high. And the scenario that I want to highlight is the market pulling back to its 50%, but not making it all the way to the negative 23. And this is a situation where the market pulls back to the 50. It's a little bit dirty, meaning it doesn't just stop at the 50 and reverse and go right to the target. It sort of trades in a little bit. You take a little bit of heat on the position in this specific entry. You can use a 2192.25, just rounding up. If it's an odd number, if it's an even number, adding a tick. If it's an odd number, you can round and then add a tick, uh, which I'll talk about in just a second. But just adding a tick so your order is one tick in front of the 50, and then putting your stop six ticks away. So a 92.25 with a 90.75 stop gives you uh, plenty of wiggle room on the trade, so your stop is outside of the 61.8. But then as, as the market kind of first five or six, seven minutes here, market kind of sits around, doesn't really do a lot, and then it starts to drift higher in the direction of our trade. So what I like to do is leave my stop alone at the beginning, try to be as patient as I can at the beginning of the trade because the ES will tend to do this where it moves sideways around your entry. Maybe it's down a point, up a point. But then once it gets going, it typically really gets going. And so, in order to lock in profits on the way up, rather than being aggressive at the start of the trade and getting stopped out and then watching the market move without you. I like to wait till we break the swing high and then move my stop up underneath whatever candle broke that swing high. So in this case, uh, the market starts moving up and we break out of the previous high, a 94.75, and that candle that did so had a low of 93.75. So I just move my stop from my original minus six up underneath that candle and then the next candle moves higher. I can trail my stop and move it up underneath the next candle. And this is a good example where the market didn't quite make it to the target. You can throw a order out there at the negative 23 and trail your stop at the same time. That way you're locking in profits on the way up. This one reversed, uh, came back down, retested the entry, got really dirty, traded through the 61.8, and then finally made it back up to the target. Uh, there's a couple things that this type of trade where we don't get to the target the first time, I do not like to re-enter on a second test unless I have you know a smaller setup that I can 
pull from. So I wouldn't just be putting a blind limit order down here a second time after I got taken out of the trade uh, because the likelihood that you know the retest is going to fail is a lot higher. But when we get a situation like this where a little bit of a double bottom at the 50, we break the swing high, you can get in again on a smaller 512 setup. And then you can use that same target, the uh, 96s that we eventually made it to. So that's kind of uh, the scenario where we don't make it to the target the first time, we retest, and then we make it later on. The next thing that I'll do from here, I'll use, you can, you can use whatever the lowest anchor is uh, around the entry for the next move. So pulling down here, lows, up to highs. And then in this case, we're at an odd number for the setup. So the 50% the line is a 93.38. So you can round up and then add a tick. So a 93.75 would be the entry. And you can kind of split the difference if there's a smaller 512, if there's a smaller retracement above it. So the 93.38 is just below the 61.8 of the smaller 512. So splitting the difference, rounding up and adding a tick gives you a 75. That ensures that if the market does come all the way back to the 50, you're going to get filled. And if it just comes back to the uh, closer 50, maybe trades in by a couple ticks, you're likely to get filled. And then same scenario, the market uh, started to rally, did not make it all the way to 61.8, but as soon as we break the previous swing high, then I'll just move my stop from the minus six up underneath the candle that broke the swing high. And then in this case, again, taken out uh, as the market started to turn around. And then going one step further as the market then, in this case, not only did it come back to the 50, but now we failed the setup, broke the major swing low. Now we can turn around and start taking short setups. So this is another scenario that you often see is the market puts in a little swing high and then breaks a 61.8. And so you can do one of two things. You can either wait for the market to come all the way halfway back. So if you started at the highs as your anchor, and pulled to the first swing low, well, the market didn't make it up into the 50%. Next swing low didn't make it up into the 50%. It's not until we broke the major swing low down here that the market came all the way back to the 50% and then started to reverse. So when we have a situation where we've got a long drawn up, we break the 61.8 and we break some previous swing lows, you can take, and the first, the first setup doesn't come into its 50, you can take what would have been the entry if you were filled to the next low. And whoop, almost there, that low, and use that as your entry into uh, what could be a, a longer term move. But just being aware that Taking a setup like this, the market does have the, the chance to come all the way halfway back. So those are kind of some uh, scenarios that we see a lot in the E-mini S&P. You know, every setup is not going to go entry to target. Uh, earlier this week on Tuesday, I believe it was, uh, we had, I still have it drawn up, the uh, a Wednesday rather, the market uh, declining a little bit off the open. And then we rallied up into the 50, and then we traded straight down to and through the 61.8. So in this situation, the market breaks its swing low. I can move my stop from my original minus six, and I can take it down to uh, the candle that breaks the low, and then just continue to trail all the way down, either until your target gets hit or until you get taken out a little bit past that initial negative 23. So those are ways that you can manage your position and have a winning trade and have a couple of, you know, decent size, two, three, four point, uh, three and four point winners on a trade that doesn't even go all the way to its target, but at the same time, managing your risk so that you can take something out of the market 
even if it's uh, chopping around or going back and forth. So uh, that's our lesson for today. Live trading Tuesday in the uh, the educational trading room. You can check that out over at eminimind.com. Lots of other great great blog posts and uh, free content as well over there. I hope you all have a great weekend, and we will talk to you next week.